I do not believe depression is real. I believe that is one of the greatest pandemics of this world mm -hmm. is to spread this lie of depression. If you feel depressed, good. It's called pain. It's a part of this world, right? And let's just be honest. Depression is a first world problem. You do not see depression in third world, second world countries. Probably, you know why? Because our lives ain't that tough. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the Digital Social Hour. I'm your host, Sean Kelly. Here with my co-host, Wayne Lewis. What up, what up? And our guest today, Jeremiah Evans. What's up, guys? Man, the Jeremiah Dior's. Jeremiah's in the building. <laughs> Dior ones. Yes. Step, <laughs> big stepping. Naturally. How much yes. you pay for them? I got these for 15. 15 K. Yeah, 15 K. That's 15, the most 000. I've seen on a shoe someone spend. Really? Yeah, for you've real? seen more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On what? Yeah, the Marty McFly's, they go for what? Oh. Uh, 90,000? Uh, I mean, I mean, you could talk about like... Did it like? I mean, you could talk about like the 1985s. I, Michael a lot Jordan's of, ones, yeah, went for two million, something like that. I mean, dude, like, the, yeah, these these are actually not that expensive compared to some of these and other they're shoes. Rare. Like yeah. the real ones are actually rare. Like, I mean, how many of those were made? You think? Mm, I, don't, I don't. I don't think it's what a thousand pair. Something. Like, yours is numbered, right? Those are numbered. Yeah, yeah I mean, I can take it off. There's a number here on the inside. Yeah. So, but wow. it, it's it's a pretty big amount. These these are nice. These are rare, but. There's some shoes, man, that they're so rare. Like yeah. they're, 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 it's easy to sell shoes for like thirty, forty thousand dollars. Depends Damn. on, yeah, it depends on the collection. How many shoes do you have? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> I like you guys are both sneakerheads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I fuck with shoes. I you like know what's funny? I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't that big of a sneakerhead mm -hmm. before, but it's kind of, it's kind of a marquee of like entrepreneurs. Like back in 1990s, mm -hmm. it was like how good your suit looked. Yeah. Now it's what sneakers are you wearing? Mm. Like if you're an entrepreneur, you got to show up in top tier sneakers in order for people to be like, all right. Sneakers and watch. Yeah, sneakers like, and watch. Car, car. I've noticed that. Yeah, I, I've had man. to step up my game a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to uh, appearance is key. Like I always, like we've yeah. talked to a guy before. Yeah, appearance. So you mentioned suits. Uh, what were you doing before sneakers? Was oh man, I couldn't afford before when I get into sneakers, man. I couldn't afford it. so <laughs> cleats. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really have much of a collection until mm. about four years ago when business started doing good. So mm. yeah. But I mean, I, I love watches, you know, and then yeah. cars. Oh, dude, it's it's addicting. It's bad. So you're pretty materialistic. Yeah, no, so <laughs> can't add the ego into the gift. He, he goes, he goes. You need to repent. <laughs> right. You're materialistic. That's right. No, I like hearing this point of view because no guest has has been open like this. Yeah, yeah. Really? Do yeah. You, everyone says they're not. Honestly. Well, I mean, I think so. I think when you say materialistic, there's an the ego there. But I think if you like material things, you're just human. Right. We all do. Sean. You have a nice house. Are you materialistic? With certain things. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right? Okay. Listen, let me, let me, let me say something on this, though. Like, we, especially for wealthy people, right? Mm -hmm. We speak in symbols, mm -hmm. okay? We don't, we don't speak it. We don't speak like everybody else. We speak through symbols, okay? Right. Like, when I, if, if I have a yacht, mm -hmm. that's a symbol. That, it's, a sta it's a status symbol, mm -hmm. right? We speak through symbols because, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. We good? We good? Okay, I didn't know if you were stop me. Back. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. oh okay. I didn't know if you were stop me. No, I slouched. I got no, you're good. Okay. Um, no, we, we speak through symbols, and the reason we, we speak through symbols because no one else can under, understand, mm -hmm. right? I have a yacht or I have a jet, and the size of my yacht, the size of my jet, what does it symbolize? What does it represent? Mm -hmm. It represents the amount of risk, the amount of effort what it took to become who I am to achieve that level, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about wearing a Rolex and all these dudes out there who are entrepreneurs say like, like, oh, you know, like wearing a Rolex, like that it, that doesn't show who you really are, you know? Like that's just, a, that's just a flash of the ego. It's like, you know what? Yeah, it is. <laughs> because guess what? I'm gonna be completely honest here. Your ego is actually your power. Mm -hmm. People talk about ego like it's mm -hmm. evil. Those are the people who aren't doing shit. Well, you I feel like, okay, so with that, it is it is it is a power, right? Yeah. But I think you need to know how when to apply it in what situation. Right. I don't think you should walk around with an ego because mm. then you become disliked. Well, okay. You gotta have a balance. Oh, you're gonna be disliked for sure. But you if you if you walk around trying to be liked, you ain't going nowhere. Well, not trying to be liked, but trying to just not be so egotistical when it comes to your approach and when you're communicating with people. These I feel like you have to have about I think there's a time to have an ego on. And then there's time to have your shield off. Well, let's let's define ego, 
right? Because like let, this is this is like mm -hmm. a high level idea of thinking of talking about this, and I know yeah. a lot of people can get really pissed off, right, this, right, right, right? Like like you're supposed to have an ego. Mm -hmm. Who the hell says that? No one says it out loud, but it's the truth. It's the it's it's the unspoken rule you're supposed to. Uh, of the elite. I mean, let's yeah. let's let's just go for example. We're talking sports. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan. Does he have an ego? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah he has yeah. an ego, right? Like Tom Brady. Tom mm -hmm. and I know he comes across as like. You no, know, no, no. Tom Brady no. has an ego. He has, he an, has ego, an ego, man. For there's sure. a story of, of yeah, a uh, yeah, there's yeah. a story of a janitor who walked in and saw Tom Brady mm -hmm. at 4 a.m. in the gym with his headphones on, looking at himself in the mirror, saying, "I'm the baddest motherfucker on the planet." Mm -hmm. He was saying that to himself mm -hmm. in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. And this I like that. It's right? Four in the morning, he's in the gym. Yeah. Or let's talk about. Or, or we could just go down the line. Conor McGregor. Ego. Ego. Huge ego. Right. Yeah. Well, let's let's let honestly someone who's who embodies this more than anybody, Muhammad Ali. He said, I am the greatest. Yeah, he's originator. He, he yeah, says, yeah. I am the greatest. Yeah. And he said, I told myself that before I knew I was. Right? Mm. right? Anyone who has ascended to any level of power has in this ego. world has an ego. Yeah, but you have to know when to have it and when not. You always have it. But, it's, well, but, but false ego has to be expressed by tearing others down. Mm. True ego is when I rise, mm. other, others rise with me. Mm. Think about this. What does ego mean? Like the word itself. It's Latin, it means I, mm -hmm. right? Ego right. sum in Latin means I am, right, right. right? So the power of I, it, and we talk about confidence as entrepreneurs, we talk about that. Yeah. If you don't have this supreme belief in mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. and that you will bet on you mm -hmm. over anybody else, you are not going to win. Mm -hmm. And then if you have this idea that I'm going to walk around hoping that other people like me, like me, again, you're not going to win, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The key to being a winner mm -hmm is that you have this supreme belief in I, in me, mm -hmm. right? In who I am and who I can become. But that's the true ego. The true ego is living up to your higher self. Right. No, right? absolutely. So I, I'm, I'm for the ego, but right. I'm also, I know how to control it. Yes. That's what I'm saying. It's right. a control thing. Some people lose control and then they there fall There you go. Off. And then they spiral. Yes. So then now you don't even like them. So right. Even you got an ego. It's like, dude, I don't like that. Dude. Well, what what is that? Let's define that. Yeah, That's yeah. the alter ego. Alter right. ego means other self, right? Mm -hmm. Alter ego yeah. is 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 what's battling your ego. It's right. these battle of who you really are right. of the natural man versus the higher self, right? Mm -hmm. And we're talking about like the alter ego is like, well, when do I turn it on? The ego doesn't have to tear anyone down. It doesn't have to be disliked. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be some dick, you know, walking Absolutely. around. Absolutely. But it is supremely confident it's because needed. I know who I am. It's needed. Right? Absolutely. And so the idea of turning on and off the ego, that's when we're talking about the alter ego. Because mm -hmm. people step into alter egos, right? right. They, they think this have this idea of like, oh, I'm going to, you know, step into this, this different version of me that they've created, right? <laughs> that's fine and all, but that's fake. Mm -hmm. Right. Is That's it? fake. Is it? It is because mm -hmm. if you if you understand ego, mm -hmm. you don't have to step into anything else but yourself. You mm -hmm. have to remain centered in who you are Wait. and you stay in that power. OK, so being remaining centered. Right. And yeah. also being a person that is personable, likable and can have a casual conversation with someone. Those are two different aspects. Yes. I'm talking about people who are simply their Their ego outweighs the person, mm -hmm. meaning that you really can't like engulf yourself in a conversation with them because it's too much ego. Mm. Even if you're they're speaking to a person that's lower level, they're still bragging about the right. things and it's really, you're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Have a balance in regards to no, obviously we all have an ego because success is there, Yes, but just know how to balance the ego or just kind of know who to use it against. Cause it can be used. You mm -hmm. need it at times. Because right. When we're going back and forth. You got to tell me you're the best. <laughs> right. But when you're teaching and you're expressing yourself or you're being a mentor, I feel like you have to kind of lower it so that you can express and people can really take to you in, in a sense. See, I would push back on that too. And here, here's why, here's why, like, I, I know what you're saying, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're saying because like, if you're, if you're some <laughs> who's constantly telling other people like, I'm better than you. Like <laughs> yeah. no one's going to follow you. Yeah, those people. Right? Exactly. Like yeah, no one's yeah, going to follow yeah, you, yeah. right? But what what I'm trying to what I'm trying to explain here is is when you when you understand truly the depth of who you are. Yes. Like re like really who I am in my highest form, my high self, my in my highest form. Now think about ego as being that center of power, right? If you step into that this is, this is getting, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say it, right? Mm -hmm. That's actually the highest form of love and care you could mm -hmm. ever have. Not only for yourself, mm -hmm. 
but for others. Absolutely. Mm. And this is why this like think about this, right? The most sacred things, the most sacred lessons are always the most misunderstood. There's always the most backlash around it. When you speak truth, it it divides, right? Absolutely. Truth divides. And you take <laughs> right. right. Truth divides. Right. Mm -hmm. It's either it's either right or it's or wrong. wrong. That's the thing about truth. And especially today, we can mm -hmm. talk about this all the time is no one wants to talk about truth. For some reason, even the word truth offends people They say, oh, <laughs> well, it's my truth. truth. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. Truth is truth. Mm -hmm. And yes, truth is divisive. And that's there's a reason it's divisive, because it separates the men from the boys. It separates the lions from the sheep. Mm. It separates those who would live in the light, those who would live in the truth versus those who would not. Right. And that is critical because if we don't do that, if we don't have truth, then we live in chaos. Right. And so right. what's so what is the truth? The truth is understanding who you are. Mm. And if you understand who you really are and your highest power, then you're full of ego. Mm. And I know everyone out there wants to, you know, we have this weird definition around ego, but our definition in the English language is wrong. Mm. It's wrong, right? Because I, I'm very Christian, right? And I'm going to offend a lot of Christians here when I say this, but this is what people people say, like in Christianity, uh, you know, confess your sins, right? Well, that stem that stems from you know the Catholic Church. It comes back obviously from the Bible, right? But actually, if you take it back to the Islamic and the Jewish language, even before the time of Christ, actually it was more of confess your greatness. Think about that. Confess your greatness, not your sins. Why is that? Why should you confess your greatness, not your sins? Well, because if I'm a worthless piece of shit, right? You and I constantly- become that. Exactly. You there is no that. accountability on how I'm supposed to act. Mm -hmm. I'm a worthless piece of shit, and I tell myself every day I repent of my sins. And we <laughs> act like that's humility, right? Right. We act like that's humility. It's thinking less of ourselves, right? Which it's is humble. That's what the origin of humble comes. I hate that word. No, the word humble is totally misunderstood, <laughs> right? And I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Remind me, we'll get to that in a second, right? But- but think about this, right? If I'm a worthless piece of shit, if I'm a worthless worm, lower, you know, all this stuff, right? Then there's zero accountability. I'm going to act exactly, uh, you know, like that level, right? But what if I told you that you were a God? Mm. What if I told you that you were a king? What if I told you that you actually have the power to create order amongst all the chaos, that you can build kingdoms here on earth, whether it's in business or your family or whatever it is, you have that power as a man and as a woman, that is the power inside you. Well, once you understand that, your responsibility and the accountability that you carry on your shoulders every day on how you should act mm -hmm. has now elevated to you acting like someone who is important and who actually can make a difference in this world. So the idea of understanding your greatness is actually the most humble thing you could ever do because it will bring you to your knees. Mm -hmm. When you know who you are, it will bring you to your mm -hmm. knees and actually, when we talk about, there's two words, there's humility and there's meekness. By the way, stop me if I'm going off. I love these topics, guys. <laughs> no, they're, this they're, is good. Right. This is Welcome to the digital social. <laughs> <laughs> and buy, buy, some, uh, buy, buy some jerseys while you're at it. But think about this, right? We talk about meekness and we talk yeah. about humility. Right. Again, words that are completely misunderstood, the true definition of meekness is greatness beyond all human me measure, mm -hmm. but still being willing to bend the knee. Because are, are you really that are you really that humble if you're just a low piece of shit and you're always on your knees, always begging, mm -hmm. always begging? It was like, no, you're actually not that humble. Mm. You beg every day. You know, you think down on yourself every single day. You're not that humble. You know why? Because you live there. You know who's humble? The king who still bends the knee. The God who still looks to God as himself, as, as our father and says, I will serve thee, right? That's the most humble thing you could ever do is to be great beyond me all measure mm -hmm. and still be willing to bend the knee, still be willing to serve. Mm -hmm. And that's where you're talking about when it comes to the ego mm -hmm. is still being able to serve, serve and still yeah. being around your right, fellow men right. and loving them and serving them, right. especially in business, right? As business, honestly, is the new kingdom, right? You build businesses, you're building a form of kingdom, Correct. right? And if I'm the head of my business, I am the king of my kingdom. Mm -hmm. My job, if you're a real entrepreneur, is to serve, yes. is to serve a purpose, to solve a problem, mm -hmm. not to make profits, to, to solve serve. a problem. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then you're living in your highest form and your highest self. And I know I get on this tangent, but that is the highest form of humility mm -hmm. is to actually have supreme confidence. And I will say an ego. If you have an ego, then you are now able to be humble. Mm. 
right if you're always you know you know who you are that's right right. you know who you are you carry a light and we know this guys think about the people who walk in a room and you can feel it you're like who's that but you immediately you know right that's someone who knows who they are that's someone who has sacrificed in their life and has put off what we call the natural man the you know the the weakness of men and they've sacrificed to become who they are Mm. and if they've stepped into that it's undeniable. You feel it. That's why when Michael Jordan walks in the room, everyone goes, right. even before he's Michael Jordan, they go, there's something different about yeah. that dude, right? It's because he understands the power of ego. And that's what I'm talking about is like, is we, again, we always, we always try to, it's like, hey, you know, channel your ego, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, keep your ego in check. It depends on a person, but I, I definitely get what you're saying. It's right. Just some people that use their ego for bad. Exactly. And those are the most people I'm talking about. But I, you're exactly I right. Yeah. But is that really their ego? If they're using it for bad, like I said, when you step into your highest mm-hmm. form of self, mm-hmm. that is truth and that is light right. inside of you. That's confidence, right? right? Right. And does that person ever use that for bad? You can. Absolutely. You could. But I that, believe you can. I, I would say yeah, yeah. you don't because you, that's not your true form. You stepped into mm-hmm. an alter ego mm-hmm. for your own gain and your own benefit. Right. Again, this is the idea of there is the alter ego, your other self and your true self. Mm. And again, we define them as the same word as ego, right? We use the same word. One is and just altered. It's, it, one is one is the other self yeah. and one is your true yeah. self. Right. And if you step into light and power and truth, then you are full of love and light and mm. service. Mm. You're full of this power of not wanting to tear others down, but to raise them up. Absolutely. Right? So, I mean... Man, we go on these tangents. No, 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 that was, that, that was that, my yeah, idea, that, for sure. That, that yeah. I've never heard that take on it. Yeah. it, it but that's the thing is like, we don't talk about this enough. Nah. And we and you know why? It's taboo. It's taboo. Because people will be like, well, you're not, he, they'll, as soon as they hear you talking, well, he's not a humble guy. He's not, they'll start using, throwing those words yeah. at you. Right. They'll start you're not a man words. of the people. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You also don't believe depression is real. <laughs> so you believe in stoicism? <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Stoicism? You, yeah. yeah you, you know what no. that is? Stoicism, it's, yeah. it's, it's telling yourself that I'm not depressed. So it's all mental. When you're sick, I'm not sick. Well, Dep- sickness might be a little different. Mm, I mean, than you depression. can tell yourself that, but I'm serious. Stoicism is a actual real thing. Stoicism is yeah, an yeah, ancient yeah. philosophy. Yeah. You know, really, I believe of Stoicism, uh, really, the founder of Stoicism was Aristotle. Right? Yes, yes. And he, he was one of the teachers of, of a man named Marcus Aurelius, mm-hmm. one they consider the greatest emperor of Rome. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about the greatest yeah. empire of all time and yeah. the greatest emperor practice this philosophy right Mm -hmm. and the philosophy actually does stem from this idea of what i'm talking about with ego and greatness Mm -hmm. and it is that i am in control of my life Mm -hmm. and anything outside of that is not my concern Mm -hmm. right but no i mean to what you're saying i do not believe depression is real i believe that is one of the greatest pandemics of this world is to spread this lie of depression to spread this lie of anxiety no that way you feel sad and depressed, but that doesn't mean you are mm. a depressed person. It's this idea of identity. We're talking about identity and who you are, right? You think that just because you feel sad and depressed often, that that's who you are and there's nothing you can do about it. You have no idea who you are and how powerful you are. You have no idea what you are put on this earth to do and how much power you have to overcome that. If you feel depressed, good. It's called pain it's a part of this world right and let's just be honest depression is a first world problem you do not see depression in third world second world countries because it is a first world problem you know why because our lives ain't that tough Mm. our lives are not that tough and so we have to create other problems in our life or maybe it's because we've never actually suffered i can tell you exactly how to overcome depression right here right now go do something really really difficult and overcome it whether that's a diet a challenge weightlifting or you know or or anything go do something and accomplish something even if it's small because what you'll find it will take pain and sacrifice to get there you have overcome something that is the purpose of our lives Mm. is to overcome right and if we sit in our depression a lot of people are depressed when i say this they freak out Mm -hmm. because i'm attacking their identity and these victims and these people who want to be victims it is attack on their identity because it gives them a crutch for life. Mm. It gives them a, a reason to always have an excuse. Mm. And you guys know from playing sports, there's always someone who always has an excuse on the team. Right. Always. There's always someone who has a little nick, always. right? But then there's those who find a way to push through that nick, right? They, mm. they push through 
that pain to sacrifice for us to win, for the team, whatever it is, right? Jimmy Butler. Yeah, Jimmy Butler. Dude, he's, oh, my God. Different. Yeah. He, all the way. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dude, he's different. What a stud. And he's he's a clone of Michael Jordan. We mm-hmm. can talk about that, right? <laughs> different, but, for sure. But, no, depression is not real, right? Mm-hmm. And yes, it is a real feeling, but it is not who you are. Mm. One of the most dangerous things you could ever have is some doctor tell you that this is who you are and there's nothing you can do about it. Except and here's this medication. It. And here's this medication. Take it for the rest of your life. And Big Pharma yeah. makes $36 I mean, a month off you. Oh, no. Yeah. For, if you want to talk about a life paying yeah. residual income yeah, for Big crazy. Pharma. You're paying it, bro. Yeah. Right. For sure. And all because you bought into this idea that you're weak, mm. that you can't overcome. Yeah. Right. Mm. That you can't like, you know what? like people who are depressed are actually blessed because it is a blessing to have your problems. There's actually a woman. Do you guys know who Yoonmi Park is? I've heard of her. Is that the South Korean? Yes. That's the North Korean Korean. girl. She was on Joe Rogan's podcast. She speaks at the UN. I have, I've had the honor of actually being with being around her and, and, and traveling all across the country with her. And she's become a good friend of me and my wife. And I couldn't, I could not tell you guys, how powerful that woman is. Mm. And here's why. This one, like, I want you guys, everyone listening to this, I want you John to understand had this. dealt with a little bit of depression. All, all he did was change his diet. Oh, dude. I mean, you want, your, your body <laughs> yeah. is changed. how you control the mind. So changed. I got diagnosed with depression yeah. anxiety okay. in and college. Was diet the whole uh-huh. time. And it was because I wasn't working out. Yeah. I wasn't eating a good diet. Yeah. And they made me believe I was this kid that had depression, basically. They, and you, yeah, hey, this is how it's going to be the rest of your they life. They gave me Xanax. Yeah. They gave me Clonazepam. Ta- yeah, take and, this stuff, and, and it'll, that'll destroy your yeah. life even more. I almost died from it. I, dude, I don't doubt it. And I, we could talk about Big Pharma want to shut down this podcast. But it's the <laughs> truth, man. That is some of the most dangerous stuff you could ever yeah. put in your body. Yeah. And we're just handing it out like it's candy. Yeah, for right? sure. Yeah. But, I mean, let, let's talk, like the body is the key to controlling the mind. So if you want to control the mind, your body is that tool. So if you, and that's why they say you can solve 90% of depression, anxiety through the body, through exercise and diet, mm-hmm. you know? And I also say like, of course there's going to be someone who has something in their brain that is off, but that is a small percentage, so small that we need to have this conversation that that's probably, if you're listening to this, it's probably not you. Right. Cause we're talking 99% of all this depression, anxiety stuff is actually something that you could easily overcome. Mm-hmm. And they say, oh, it's a chemical imbalance in your brain. Well, no everything's a chemical imbalance in your brain if i start talking to you about puppies killed right and we just start ha- having that conversation about little puppies right there being we're all gonna feel sad mm. guess what happened we all had some release of chemical in our brain with the thought so actually our thoughts control the release mm. so if it's it's not the other way around it's not all oh, the chemicals are being released and then i have the thought no your thoughts are what release the chemicals. The chemicals. Wow. That's why depression cannot exist in the same body as gratitude. Yeah. And if you live in gratitude and you, you have that be, power, you can't be sad. You can't be sad. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. And this is what I'm saying about you and me. Because even is, your losses, you actually are thankful for them because there's a lesson in them. So exactly, you really can't be down right. about so, anything. So That's happiness time. is a choice. Happiness it is every a, day. Exactly. It's a hard choice. Yes. It's easy is actually easier to be sad. It is easier. Right. It is way easier. That's yes. why it's a first world problem because mm-hmm. we choose the easy route. We choose this victim route. It makes us feel better. Yeah. Oddly enough, it makes us feel better to have that because it gives us gives us something to overcome or really just some some like crutch to it's live with. It's attention. Right? It's gratitude. It's uh, people. Uh, it's more so along the lines of attention because people actually take to you more when you're sad. They oh, feel yes. sorry for you. Oh, right? oh, we want to talk about the manipulation that people yeah, it's sad, are willing it's to sad, do to yeah. get you to conform to them. For sure. Because, hey, I'm feeling depressed. Like, okay, look, let me get you a blanket. <laughs> right. right. Let me get you some crackers. Right. You They're know, not going like, to tend to the happy guy. Yeah, They're right. going to tend to the sad girlfriend. <laughs> that's right. Not even a sad man. Yeah. The sad man, we are literally, we got to deal with that on our own. Yeah. The right. sad woman gets all the attention and care. The sad man has to just get over That's it. right. That's, that's just, right. That's the way the world is built, designed. It that. is for sure something that people yeah. use to manipulate others to Absolutely. get what they want. I mean, let's be honest. It did. It is. You so, know. Wait, can can you yeah. tell everybody what you do? Yeah. <laughs> 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 we didn't even get into that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, so I own a company called the Alpha's Creed. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a it's my coaching company where okay. I, I teach people what we're talking about now. I teach people. Right. You know, actually how to make more money, mm-hmm. um, how to become more physically fit and how to become who you're supposed to become. Mm-hmm. Right. I also own uh, a company called Black Pine Capital, mm-hmm. which is just a conglomerate of different businesses like life insurance company, right. uh, credit company, uh, real estate, stuff like mm-hmm. that. So right. when did you so when did you actually feel like there was a need for 
what you do and when did you actually start to build your own confidence in regards to like because you know, money actually helps with confidence i feel like mm -hmm. some people may be wrong yeah. but sure. i feel like money actually helps with confidence when did you when did you make enough money to where you was like you know what this feels good <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna start teaching other people how to yeah. you know get to where i'm at through a feeling or happiness that, or just that's attracting it. oddly enough it's always been my vision since i was a kid oh, okay right um, so, I'm on, so I'll just give you guys a quick rundown. So on my, on my Instagram, I'm called the bull, mm -hmm. right? Uh, my nickname is the bull and people can say whatever the they want, but I didn't give myself that nickname. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't come up with it. I actually hate it. I can tell why. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell. But actually growing up, my nickname used to be the fat bull, mm -hmm. right? So I was bullied like a, bitch, you know, all growing mm -hmm. up, man. I mean, one of the things these kids used to do is, you know, like, uh, and this was all, all growing up. They would gr group these kids would find me, tackle me, kick the shit out of me. Pour chocolate milk down my throat, you know, stuff tater tots in my mouth, say fat bull needs milk, mm -hmm. right? And this went, went on for years, Damn. right? Wow. And, and I'll, I'll just, I'll just give you guys, you know, a quick idea of this. Like one day, like, I mean, I'm talking years, like I, I dude, I, it went on so long. I didn't want to fucking wake up. Damn. You know, I really, I didn't want to wake up. It was because, you know why? Because it was safe in my bed, right? Mm -hmm. If I went, if I was in bed, if I was asleep, if I stayed home, it was mm -hmm. safe. Right. And every day I woke up having to go to school. It's like. It's almost like I woke up like I was going to go and get in a fight because all the times I was like, I had those butterflies in my mm -hmm. stomach. Like a lot of times I was puking before I went to school. I was so nervous. Right. Wow. And, and so one, and one of these days, like it just felt worse than ever. And just something snapped because, you know, like they, these kids, they did the same thing. They found me, they beat the shit out of me, you know, poured chocolate milk all over my face. And I was just begging them to stop. And I just, dude, I, I begged them just stop. And they went and they ran off. Right. But, but, Oh, dude, it's, I, anyway, so what, what didn't get me though, it was the moment that I, I rolled over, I was on my knees and I just got blood in my nose and all this. And I look out and I see all these kids watching, mm. watching. And I knew they felt bad, mm -hmm. but they didn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. They didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And I, dude, I went, I, I just, and I just sat there and I asked, I was like, why won't any of you help me? Mm -hmm. And I, wa I walked straight home. My home mm -hmm. wasn't far from the ranch school. I walked home and, you know, my mom saw me and she was freaking out. Like, this, again, this has been going on for years. And, mm -hmm. and dude, I tell you, she called my dad. My dad came out from, you know, the back room and he saw me. And I'm telling you, man, something in his eyes when I and when he saw me snapped. No, it just snapped. I mean, in just pure anger and like a father would, he, he just snapped. But not at me. And I, I knew that it wasn't at me, but I saw something in his eye snap. And immediately he grabs me, mm -hmm. pulls me away from my mom and takes me to the room. And he looks me dead in the eye and mm -hmm. says, son, no one is coming to save you. Mm -hmm. And he said, if <laughs> he said, you're going to have to be the hero of your own story. You're going to have to take care of this on your own because no one's coming to help you. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to be great or you're going to be nothing. Yeah. So then he, he literally then proceeded to kick me out of the house. And he said, don't come home until you beat one of those kids up. How old were you? I was 11 at this time. I was wow. 11. He yeah. went down the street and... And so, I, that dude, that's up. what's funny is I was, I was scared shitless, mm -hmm. but in my mind, I couldn't go home. He gave me no choice. He kicked me out of the house, said, don't come home until you beat... Did he actually kids. watch the fight from around the corner? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, 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 you know, it's funny because I guess I probably could have faked it, you know, yeah, and just yeah, told him, like, yeah. I did it. Yeah. But, like, for some reason, I just believed him. Like, yeah. it's not going to... I can't come home, right? So I did. I was puking all. I was so scared. And I found one of the kids. And just because I felt like, you know, we talk about your back against the wall. I felt like I had no choice. Mm -hmm. Knock on this kid's door. And I, you know, he comes to the door and I just beat the living shit out of him, man. Right there. Just beat the shit out of him. Just all my rage just came out. And dude, I ran home. I thought I was going to get arrested. Right. But I'm running home. And I, I tell you, this was the first moment in my life mm -hmm. where I'd ever felt what we're talking about the power of self and the power yeah. of ego. Mm -hmm pure joy and happiness mm. i was so happy mm. running home i mean i could not wait to show my dad my knuckles because that's the, like you know if you've ever been in a fist fight you know like your hands kind of up yeah. a little bit of swelling right and especially if you connecting yeah uh, especially if you're you know like and so i couldn't wait i just was so excited to show him right <laughs> and he took me he you know, when i went home and showed him he took me out to get a wendy's frosty and, and burger probably didn't eat it because i was a fat bull but whatever <laughs> you know but and he just he just told me again he said he said, this is, he said, you have to become someone who's strong enough, not only to defend yourself, mm -hmm. but to defend others. So you were the only child. 
No, I had I had siblings. My, I had three sisters at the but time. But you were the youngest or oldest? I was the second oldest. Oh, right. Yeah. So you couldn't go get your sister. Yeah, but like that, you know, and that's the thing is he 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 instilled that in me, and for the rest of my life, that has been something that mm-hmm. has stayed with me is this idea of you have you have a duty to become someone right. who not only can protect themselves but can protect others, right. mm-hmm. whether it's physically emotionally right you have to be strong enough emotionally for others spiritually Mm -hmm. but financially right and that that's been the mission of my life is i've always wanted to build a business where i could help people in those things not only become Mm -hmm. who they're supposed to become but become strong enough to defend themselves Mm -hmm. and protect themselves and their family Mm -hmm. but also to stand up for others because there's a lot of in this world Mm -hmm. there's a lot of evil this is an evil and nasty place it's not set for the world is not set up for i'm not gonna say good people but weak men that's right i the, the not say like in, there's anything wrong with uh you know a beta but you can't you, you, there is you, something wrong with the beta. you can't be well there are some actual betas that can actually fight you know so well, I'm gonna, I, I give them that <laughs> so i can't like blanket that but yeah. i'm just saying just in general the world is not set up men have to be tough yes they yeah. have to be tough and they want a world full of weak men that's why yeah. they keep trying to shut the boy of andrew andrew tate because he's yeah. actually teaching strength yes but, he's not yeah. teaching he's not doing anything wrong he's just teaching how to be a strong man yes that's right and if you actually that word keeps spreading he'll create a coalition an uh, army of strong it'll be right know, they can't overthrow and no, nothing could be more important I, I i hope and pray that i can spread mm-hmm. you know that message as well is is because the I mean, you, we're talking about pandemic like the greatest pandemic in this world is weak men yeah weak why, men are the reason you, this why is do happening. you think they want us weak because we're easier to control again think about this how like can you control like uh, what let's define beta let's define alpha right mm-hmm. because you know my uh, so it's funny you know i'm a, I'm a dude walks around with the mullet and my name nickname's the bull right and after that day you know they stopped mm-hmm. calling me the fat bull they started to call me the bull and that's where i mm-hmm. came from right and they started a business called alpha right mm-hmm. biggest douchebag you've ever heard of right i mean perfect definition put me in the box mm-hmm. douchebag right yeah. mm-hmm. but you know what i don't fucking care because if that word alpha offends you then i know who you are mm-hmm you're offended by that word got it because an alpha is the only thing that can actually protect us an alpha is a protector a provider a leader and if you don't want if you want to control a group of people if you want to control a whole country or the world get rid of the alphas Mm. make alpha seem like it's something that is toxic Mm -hmm. right misogynistic misogynistic (laughs) whatever it is make the idea of alpha wrong and i'm i will i will die with this message of being an alpha is the most powerful thing you could ever do owning the fact that you're an alpha is is not something like oh you real alphas don't need to call themselves alphas yeah 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 we're we're over that Okay, it's not 1980 anymore. We're over that. Mm-hmm. You see where this world is? It's time to start t- declaring which side you're on. Yeah. I'm an alpha, which means you're not going to fuck with those kids. All the at the, at the higher level, we need to fucking get them. Mm. We need to get to them. We need to fight. We need to get, you know, like uh, actually unite and say no more, mm. right? Because there's uh, <clears throat> we talk about the kids and the <throat> Or let's talk about if you want to save the turtles. Whatever you want to do, whatever evil yeah. you want to stop this world, you have to be an alpha mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. You cannot be a beta. Yeah. And a beta is someone who is a coward, mm-hmm. who is weak, who hides, mm-hmm. who is silent. That's the key word right there is silent. Mm-hmm. Because cowards are silent. Betas are silent. Mm-hmm. Right? And again, we could talk about like light versus dark. When I went through that as a kid, I actually don't blame the kids so much who beat me up. I blame the kids who watched. Mm-hmm. Because I they allowed this you. to happen. I actually blame you. Uh, no, you're right. It, I, 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 I don't blame right. you. Know, I actually blame you. It is my and the fault. Reason why, yes. And the reason why I blame you is because that was a choice that you made to allow them to I do it. I allowed it. The day your pop said two yeah. words to you, get out. Yes. You go win. You could have <laughs> won already. Yeah. You could have won a million times I was already. being a coward. Right. Right. And right. From every day forward, you won. Yes. So I kind of look at you is not as a victim but more of a participant in the bs because that's yes. what you were you didn't know the power that you had you're one thousand percent correct so, I, for, no yeah. you're what well, yeah. i could not agree and with you, you know more. that you, i know dude you that's know. what if my dad <laughs> yeah. showed me i was being a beta yeah, yeah. yeah. i was being a little coward yeah. yeah and he showed me no you're better than this yeah you're stronger than this i'm going to show it and that's the power of a father man yeah, yeah. is that he can say get the hell out yeah. and go be a man yeah. right go 
fucking man and be strong. Mm. And that's I'll that'll live with me to mm. the day I die. But also think about all the people who could have done something, mm. right? Because let's be honest, there are people in situations who cannot help themselves. Mostly kids, mm. yeah, the yeah, kids yeah. who are preyed upon by these, you yeah. know, like no, these kids can't fact. help themselves. Yeah, yeah. But as we sit here and allow that to happen, mm. guess whose fault it is? It's ours. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing necessary for evil to triumph in this world is for good men and women to do mm. nothing. Right. It's just the act of doing nothing that allows this to happen. Because if there's alphas, if there's stronger men, like what you're talking about, what Andrew Tate talks about, if there's strong men who are willing to stand and fight, then the cowards, the wolves who prey on the sheep, they will cower. They will run. They will hide. That's the that's the nature mm. of darkness and evil is it's a coward right. and the second it's faced with an alpha with someone who's strong with someone who can fight back whether again whether it's financially mentally or emotionally in every aspect if you're someone who can stand your ground mm -hmm. you're dangerous yeah. and it's dangerous men and women by the way it's dangerous people who are strong and who are alphas that are going to change the world mm -hmm. that are going to make this world a safer and better place mm -hmm. i was telling sean uh, we had this discussion i said you have to be as good as you are good, you have to be as evil as you are good. Remember what's happening? Yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. You have to be, as, as you're a good person, yeah. you have to be that equal amount of evil. Yeah. And you have to have, you, you have to, you, you have, have to have balance. some nastiness inside you, some anger. You have to. Dude, ang you want to talk about anger? Yeah. Oh yeah, you believe you can manifest anger into positivity, right? I believe anger is a tool. I believe anyone who tells you not to be an angry person is someone who is trying to destroy your life. Because anger is a weapon. Mm. Anger, I mean, let's talk again. There's different types of anger, just like there's different, you know, top conversations of ego, right? Yeah. But like, anger, anger should be controlled too. I believe that anger should be controlled. Anger like must be controlled. It must yeah. be sheathed like a sword, yeah. right? Like any weapon, it must be under perfect control, mm -hmm. but it must always be ready. Because Absolutely. anger dissolves shame. Mm -hmm. God, and again, I'm very Christian, I believe in God. God exercises righteous anger. So if God exercises anger, then you should too yes. against evil, against things that you believe are wrong. Your anger is a tool, right? And what, let's talk about like the greatest moments in any movie or in any hero's mm. journey is the moment where they can't go on. They're beat to their knees, right? They can't keep going. They don't have anything left. And then suddenly they summon something from deep within that gets them, so, that that infuses them with power that they didn't know they had. Mm -hmm. And like, let's talk about the face they make and what their energy becomes in that moment when they're beat down. You can't keep going. You have no idea how you're gonna survive. And yet something in you calls to you and says, keep going. Mm -hmm. That is anger. Mm. Because the face you make in the, in the sight of fear, in the face of failure, is anger. It is summoning this this piss and vinegar to say yes i fucking can right and that is the tool that is the moment to call it mm -hmm. forward to say we can do this mm -hmm. right and that's again it, but if your anger is out of control then your anger controls you but just like right, any weapon right. any virtue you must have total control the opposite of control is chaos mm -hmm. and if you are controlled by the you know, anger you live in chaos yeah, as opposed to being an alpha as opposed to being a leader or as what we're talking about here you are the one who creates the order the mm -hmm. control within the chaos right as a man as a woman as an entrepreneur it's chaos out there mm -hmm. and my job is to create order to create order as a man as a woman as an alpha i create the order to control the chaos and that's the whole point of stoicism mm -hmm. that's the whole point of being a man of fighting back against this chaos and darkness mm -hmm. is to actually be in control Absolutely. right mm -hmm. and if you have control then you have power mm -hmm. power is control because power unloosed and out of control is chaos, chaos. wow right Jeremiah. I, I could talk to this man for hours. <laughs> Are we done already? Yeah. We're done, man. Oh, yeah, shit, man. This was fun, yeah, man. Yeah, that was lit. Yeah. We got to do a part two. Dude, yeah. I'm down. This yeah. was fun. I appreciate yeah. you guys having me out. Sorry I talked so much. I mean, no, nah, dude, I mean, <laughs> it's a difference between talking too much and it kind of being a, a not a draw, but you're actually, there's substance there. There's, there's yeah. you, know, you can learn a lot. Everything he was saying was very interesting. Very powerful, yeah. Yeah. Any closing comments, man? Hopefully we don't get shadow banned, man. <laughs> we, we might, but. <laughs> we might. But you know what's funny? It was worth it. I'll just say this one last thing is, is, if we get shadow bans, because we're speaking the truth. Yeah. 
And it's like my words don't matter. Like I'm not the most articulate person, even though I've trained my life to be as articulate as possible. It is so difficult to articulate your thoughts and feelings. But what what we're feeling here in this room is truth, mm -hmm. because if you speak truth, then it calls to your soul, it calls to the light within and it speaks a different message to you. Right. And anyone listening to this, hearing this, if this calls to you, it's because we're speaking truth. Mm -hmm. And that's a dangerous thing to the to the opposition. That's a dangerous thing is for men and women. I'm just I want to make sure we're all like we're all together, men and women, to have the conversations of truth. It's podcasts like this that spread that message that you met, let everybody out there know that they're not alone. Absolutely. And it's, it's when you feel alone is when they get you. But when we're united as one and you understand who you can become, that's the power that can change the world. Love it. So, Wayne? I, He's speechless, guys. <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, man. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Digital Social Hour. I'll see you next time. Peace.